Hello, this is a discussion about bipolar and unipolar signals and how you have to treat them differently for amplification and for analog to digital conversion. So we'll start out looking at our oscilloscope. This is an instrument that measures voltage on the vertical axis, time on the horizontal axis. You can see we have a sine wave here. It's a low frequency sine wave around two hertz and it has a peak to peak voltage of one volt. And I know that because I could tell that it's 500 millivolts or 0.5 volts per division. It's moving over two divisions. Now this thing right here, where my thumb is, I'll use this pencil to point to it, is called the baseline indicator. That's where the zero is on the oscilloscope. So that's saying that this line, right in the middle of the screen, is the zero. And what that tells us is that this waveform goes above and below zero. Therefore, it's a bipolar signal. In other words, it has both polarities in the signal, as opposed to a unipolar signal, which would just have one. So I could put a DC offset, literally just adding a constant to my sine wave of one volt, and you can see it jumped up now, or we still have our zero in the same place. Now it's centered at positive one volt, and the signal now is unipolar. In other words, it'll you know, it doesn't have any negative components relative to the ground on the system. So similarly, I could shift back down to zero and have it centered around minus one volts, and it's also a unipolar signal, but now it's completely negative. So this gets important when we're dealing with amplifiers. So a lot of modern amplifiers have what they call single supplies, and the power supply in your Arduino-based EK307 kit is similar. We can only generate voltages from zero to five, our op amps run from zero to five. Here's our breadboard right here. You, you used this before. You know, we get our five volts, it's powering our op amp. And the power supply that powers the op amp dictates what the output voltage of the op amp is. In other words, it can't generate a negative voltage if it doesn't have a negative power supply. So because of that, we need to keep all of our circuits in a unipolar state. In other words, they have to be between zero volts which is the lower limit, and 5 volts, which is the upper limit of our power supply. And that also determines what our output voltage is. So there's a common trick. And what we do is say if we wanted a bipolar signal to be represented or amplified by our amplifier, we can apply a DC offset to it to make it all positive. That way, when we're running it through our circuitry, it's never going to go negative, and it'll, make, it'll keep the circuit working in its linear or valid region. So an example of a sensor that's a bipolar sample, really by nature, is a loudspeaker. And you might say it's a speaker, it's a driver. If we push on the loudspeaker, we move the coil and the magnet, and a current gets generated that would flow through these wires if they're connected. If it's open circuit, then it'll generate a voltage, as we know. And so if I push on this cone, the, we get a signal that's proportional to the velocity of the speed of the cone. So it changes direction as the velocity changes direction. Hence, it's a bipolar signal. Current flows in and out of the wires. You know, it alternates. So if we look at something like this photodiode right here, that's sensitive to light, and current only flows in one direction with the photodiode under normal conditions. So that says that the greater the light intensity is, you know, the bigger the magnitude of the flow, but it maintains direction. So this kind of sensor is unipolar by nature, whereas this one is bipolar. Now we'll look into the details of how the bipolar loudspeaker, which can operate as a microphone, behaves. I connect it up to the oscilloscope. It's on channel one. And I have the uh, ground of the scope and then the positive connected. And if I push on the cone, you can indeed see that there's a bipolar signal that's going positive and negative with respect to ground. And you know, this is something I might want to amplify, say if I was using this as a velocity detector and you could use this as an accelerometer, actually, if you attached a mass to it and moved it up and down really fast, it would function as an accelerometer. So it's not just a loudspeaker. And so how would I amplify that? You know, if I amplified it with my single supply amplifier, when the signal was going negative, it would clip and it wouldn't give me a good representation of it. So what we do is we use the rail splitter circuit. We talked about that before. And a rail splitter is really just a way of saying, we made a voltage reference that's not zero volts, and we call that our zero or our ground. So what we do is, instead of having the zero volts, meaning zero signal on our transducer, we'd add some constant to it, a positive constant, in order to make it greater than zero. 
So another issue, say if we actually wanted to digitize the signal on this loudspeaker, is that the signal is really small. Like if you look at the scope, I'm on 20 millivolts per division. Right now it's a tiny signal. So even if I'm pushing on this fairly hard, I'm only getting you know, maybe at most 100 millivolts, but most of my important information is really less than 20 millivolts in size. So if I stop the oscilloscope right there, you can see this negative going pulse right here is only about seven or eight millivolts because it's less than you know, a 20 millivolt increment on the oscilloscope. And we know that our AD converter on our Arduino can only respond to signals that are about 4.8 millivolts in size or larger. So we're gonna get really poor resolution if we just digitize this. Not only is this gonna be out of range, but even the positive going one's only gonna register one or two counts on our analog to digital converter, which is gonna really make the signal have low fidelity. So the trick is, is we wanna amplify, but we also want a DC shift. And that's where you use the level shifter combined with an amplifier circuit. So I built one on my breadboard over here. I have my level shifter down on the bottom here. There's a potentiometer voltage divider, feeds that op amp, and then the yellow wires right here are the reference voltage, and those go to a non-inverting amplifier. And then I also want to plug my loudspeaker negative terminal, which we'll call the ground one the negative terminal, into that reference. In other words, I want the zero signal to be at the reference voltage, not at zero volts per se relative to the microcontroller. So I could disconnect my speaker and then I'm gonna connect my oscilloscope to the output of my amplifier. I'll turn the amplifier back on. And you can see right now it's sitting at zero. Now I need to plug in my loudspeaker to the reference. We'll get into the input of the amplifier. And you could see as I did that, the oscilloscope uh, trace jumped off the screen. So now I have my speaker plugged in. Where'd the trace go? And the trace went above the screen because our range was so small because we're looking at that tiny signal. So now I could you know, so-called zoom out or change the voltage per division to a more reasonable voltage and you could see now that I'm on one volt per division and then my baseline's down here. So this is one volt, two volts, and a little bit more. So it's about two and one quarter volts is where the zero of the loudspeaker is sitting. Now, if I push on the loudspeaker, again, you'll notice that we're getting fairly large signals. If I hit the stop button, say if we looked at the signal right here, we could see that when I first hammer it with my thumb, it goes all the way negative, and it actually goes to zero, which means that it's clipping the signal. And on the recoil or the rebound, you know, it bounces up to about, you know, the reference plus two-thirds of a division, so it's going to be about around 2.75 volts, and then it, a little signal occurs and it goes down. So first thing we could see is that, you know, unless I really hammer on it, it's not going below zero. And then it's also centered at approximately one half the power supply voltage. I'll run it again if I'm a little bit more gentle this time. I'll put a sine wave on there and hit stop. You could see now I'm getting good amplification, right? Like my peak to peak voltage here is about one third of a division. So it's about 300 millivolts, 330 millivolts. And it's centered around roughly 2.25 volts. And this is a signal that's large enough to feed into my analog to digital converter on my Arduino and get good resolution. And this orange wire right here is literally running the signal into analog input zero on the Arduino. And then from there, I can do everything in the digital domain, including looking at the waveform. We just saw how we could use the oscilloscope to look at these time varying signals. Now we might want to use our Arduino. After all, unfortunately, we don't have oscilloscopes that you could bring home this semester. But with the Arduino, you could make an oscilloscope. Basically, you could do that. And I wrote some simple code over here. It's really pretty easy. All I do is I do an analog read on the pin. I convert that analog signal into volts. Then I print that out to my serial monitor, which is basically a serial stream to the computer. And the Arduino has a cool thing built in where it has a serial plotter. And if I click that, it opens up this window over here. And you could see that I have 
counts down here. This is really just the number of samples that have come through the serial plotter. And then it has a scale of volts on this side. And if you look really close, you can see there's a little bit of noise on there, which might actually be me speaking because the loudspeaker is acting like a microphone. But if I start pushing on the microphone or on the loudspeaker, you can see the voltage is varying. You know, and uh, indeed, if we look at the scale here, this is zero volts, three volts. So around the same roughly 200 or 2.25 volt baseline signal, that's a reference. And then when we bang on this, it's actually auto ranging the scales out of ranging, then we can get a voltage signal. So a cool thing I can do if I want to you know, bring, if I want to subtract off that DC offset is in this equation over here, I can literally just subtract off that reference voltage, which is probably you know, roughly say 2.25. So minus 2.25. Let's see if this works without a uh, without having a float conversion in there, a recast. Compiling, uploading. Okay, done uploading. I'm gonna, oh, and we could see our voltage now is approximately zero is a pretty good guess. So now when I bang on the loudspeaker, you could see my signal goes positive and negative. You know, we get that bipolar signal we were talking about. So you could see where we use the level shifter to bring the voltage up run it through the amplifiers and the AD converter into the Arduino. And then in software, we subtract that reference back off. And now we have our bipolar signal again.